Hi friends, hope you are doing fine. I am Dr. Ganguly. Welcome to my channel. So today I am going to talk about the industry research scientist. And many of you are familiar with the usual career track as far as the universities are concerned. So essentially you have something like postdoc, lecturer, assistant professor, associate professor, professor and so on. Now if you are somebody who is thinking of going to the industry, the career path is going to be something like PhD, postdoc, research scientist, senior research scientist, principal research scientist and so on. So let's look at this research scientist career path and see what exactly does a research scientist do. So essentially like the name says, this is a person who combines research and scientist functions. So essentially we would consider that a scientist is doing research all the time, but that's not necessarily the case. There are also titles such as applied scientist and so on. So the research scientist essentially focuses on research and science, the intersection of research and science. So essentially what this person does is after he or she joins the industry after their PhD degree directly or maybe after a postdoc stint, they essentially continue to do a series of PhDs throughout their life. So that's the way I look at it. So essentially if you think about your PhD, it may have taken three to five or more years to do your PhD. Your postdoc stint may have been for one to three years. Now essentially what you do is you work on a research problem, maybe you spend three to four years on it, then you work on another research problem, then you work on another research problem and so on. So essentially let's presume that you are working in the health sciences sector. So maybe you are working in a pharmaceutical company and you are make, working on one drug formulation here, you are working on a molecule and essentially you bring out one drug formulation at the end of three or four years you take it through all the different trials and so on for, for example the experimental trials the clinical trials and so on and then you bring this product out and then you move on to the next product and so on so during a lifetime you may work on four or five or six or seven such medical drug formulations. so that would be the typical path of a research scientist in a pharmaceutical company now, if you are in a different kind of company, you may bring out different type of products. So depending on the company, your product type is going to change. So if you are working in a company which is working in the computer sciences area, maybe you are bringing out machine learning tools. Maybe you bring out a chat bot and then you do something related to natural language processing. Then you work on some problem related to vision and so on. So you essentially end up doing a series of PhD problems throughout your career. Now, the next thing is that these problems may be basic research or applied research and often the focus is more toward applied research, but nowadays I would say the demarcation between basic and applied research is shrinking. And in fact, in many areas of work, the companies are at par, if not ahead of the university sector, because do remember they are very well funded, they have experimental facilities which are very good, they have the latest softwares, they have the latest equipment and so on. They can also hire the brightest people in many cases. So I would say that whatever research you are doing is pretty close to basic research and the only thing is that it is being done with application in mind. Now the next thing is that the research scientist essentially can work by himself and this is true in the initial years and maybe even toward mid-career and later he may work as a part of a group where he is uh, essentially leading some people. So essentially this is somewhat of a lone ranger job because research is somewhat like that but they do get to interact with their fellow peers so it is not like working in complete isolation which can happen in the case of many university professors. So the research scientist does have some level of camaraderie or talking which he does with his colleagues and so that's there but he generally tends to work himself most of the time. Now the next point is that though the research scientist does not have graduate students which is typical of a university professor, he may have various people reporting to him and these people may have bachelor's, master's degrees and even PhD degrees. So essentially in many ways the research scientist is somewhat like a professor. He's reading a research group and so what happens is that this group essentially contains people who are typically graduates Sometime he may also have some interns in summer and so on. So in a way it is very similar to a university professor. 
except these people are now employees or interns of the company so keep that in mind now the important difference i would say is that the research scientist does not publish a lot so this is generally the case that the industry does not want to give out all its discoveries through publication it essentially wants to control this intellectual property through patents and also through products so the key difference between academia in industry is this that the academia is totally obsessed with papers and the industry is more towards patents and products though every now and then they do publish a paper because they want to make sure that they are part of the research community they may go to a conference and present their work that is more common than going to journals and that's because when you present a paper in a conference you do not give to need to give a lot of details about all the things which you have done the paper can be somewhat of an overview of the subject and many times companies just want to tell the people that hey look here we have done this thing we have invented this drug we have invented this new model for deep learning and so it's there we have all the data we have done all the analysis and so we have something for you here so that's the key thing to remember intellectual property patents and so on now the next thing is like i said the career track is somewhat like this you may start off as a research scientist position sometime there is a junior research scientist position but i think increasingly that is being removed so you start with a research scientist then you may have something like a senior research scientist after several years and then you have a principal research scientist after many more years sometime at the end of this there may be something like a technical fellow in some companies and sometime these people may become cto also so that's the typical career track of the expert in the company setting now most of the time they are doing the same thing they are essentially doing research and then later on they are more in a supervisory role in research so it is somewhat similar to what happens in the university system the assistant professor does most of the research and then later on the professors take on some of the role of chairman dean and so on so the same kind of structure is also possible in a company setting now one of the differences of course is that the research scientists typically are not tenured positions so it's somewhat different from the company in that sense or from the university in that sense that uh, there may be times when the company is doing very badly when it is not profitable in those cases actually these jobs are unstable and the person may be asked to go however tenured professors like you know are permanent and so they are something which is very sought after by some people but do remember that tenured professors are very difficult positions to get whereas research scientists pro positions are much more larger in number also typically the research scientists make much more salary than many professors in many cases so that's something to keep in mind especially at the lower level so essentially when you are a postdoc or you are an assistant professor you may be paid much less than a postdoc in a company or a research scientist in a company so that's something to remember so that was my take on this key issue as to what is an industrial research scientist and i hope it will help to let many of the phd's and postdoc consider this career path also so i will end this video here and i will see you in a video sometime soon see you then